I'm Rob Mars. I'm a plant ecologist and I've, I'm an emeritus professor at the University of Liverpool. Uh, I've been president of the Heather Trust for the last 15 years and much of my research is on the management of upland plant communities, including this uh, moorland vegetation here. A lot of my research has been done on one single site in the north of England, a place called Moor House. And the reason that I've worked there is because I became involved in monitoring upland vegetation in the 1980s when the person who had done it before had retired. So I took over and, it's, and now that monitoring is done by the Environmental Change Network. Now, one of the important things about that is that it's long-term measurements of change. Now, there's a whole host of experiments in the, in the, on this reserve. Some are on just on grazing, plus and minus grazing. And then there's one that is combines plus and minus grazing with moor burning. Now, this was set up uh, two years after I was born, in 1950, well, it was set up in 1954, and it looks at three burning rotations in combination with plus and minus sheep grazing. And the good thing about this experiment is it's a properly designed experiment. It's replicated uh, and it has gone on for a very long time. Interestingly, the people that set it up knew that they would not get the full benefit of the results for 40 years. And that's an amazing, you know, foresight to, you know, for anybody in science uh, to design uh, land-based experiments. So that's, that's a really ex important experiment. The real issue is why should anybody want to burn? Now, in most places, the burning is done for grouse management. The issue, of course, is wildfire, and I believe that some form of burning rotation is really useful in breaking up the uh, vegetation canopy because in that way you have some areas of short heather or short vegetation, some areas of long vegetation and it means that the overall moorland biomass is reduced and hence is a lower fuel load. The other important aspect of this is there are some areas of low vegetation where you can get in to help fight wildfire. So my view is that heather burning is one tool to help uh, in the mitigation of wildfire risk. It won't stop wildfire because these habitats are essentially a fire evolved habitat. The dominant species heather has evolved for, for, to, to, uh, with fire. It responds quickly. If it burns, it recovers very quickly. Its seeds are stimulated by smoke and heat. So, you know, this uh, vegetation will burn very, very quickly uh, if a wildfire starts. And that, I think, is one of the big problems facing the UK in the next uh, 20 or 30 years, especially if there is any form of climate change with much uh, longer, drier summers. The issue is with all land management decisions, there are options. And those options might include rewilding with more uh, trees in the uh, environment, and that's okay. But there are risks attached to that. And the problem is, it's all very well to take a decision to either no burn areas uh, or to allow trees to grow, but then you've got to accept that there could be a wildfire problem and you've got to be prepared to A, handle that and take responsibility for it. And I think that's one of the big issues, is taking responsibility for your land management decisions. I think one of the big benefits of having a gamekeeper community is that they tend to work together 
especially on things like wildfire risk. And in my view, every moorland unit, not an estate, it's got to be bigger than its single estates, moorland units need to have a wildfire uh, mitigation and control plan. One of the, the good things about having good gamekeepers on the ground is that many of them are skilled in fire fighting uh, and uh, they tend to pull together within a moorland unit to help each other out. And the kit that they now routinely have uh, available for this job are, is much greater than the old fire beaters and fire floggers that uh, uh, are seen on the television occasionally. The, you know, the, the, the use of fire fog, proper fire fogging equipment, uh, leaf blowers and all this sort of thing. Uh, and if push comes to shove, actually, uh, you know, cutting or ploughing fire breaks to try and help the, the, the stop the spread of fire uh, really is very, very useful. Where you have a high biomass of heather, you will have a high fire risk. But on some areas, certainly in, in some moors on the Peak District, it's gone beyond that and there is succession uh, th through tree colonisation. So we now have a, a moorland with high heather, a high heather cover and biomass with trees as well. And that, of course, adds to the, the, the biomass and adds to the, the fuel load and, and makes the problem worse. So there is a problem. The, the burning helps to stop tree growth, as does uh, sheep grazing. Uh, but if those two things are not implemented, then quite clearly there is the potential for tree growth into the moorlands. And if that happens, then the biomass is increased and the wildfire risk is also increased.